Right then, so what would, well, let me get into bloody position. Right then, so what we've got here is the head and the rocker cover and the uh, saddle, the cam cap saddle thing that is basically clamping down your camshafts. The fucking flake of fucking whatever that is. Right, so um, before we get into the meat of, you know, popping out all of these valves and bagging, well, boxing them up, I've got a box for them. Um, one of the big questions will probably be that I alluded to was that these nubbins in the end of this casing so I'll put the picture up it's a repeat picture but you get what I mean so you know what I'm talking about these saddles and all the rest of it and the camshafts themselves so what we want to do is um, this engine as it stands as a complete unit is pretty much on its last legs and the reason why is some of the wear that has happened to these saddles now there are things that you can repair and there are things that you can't and this head is eh. now you could stick this whole entire engine back together and it would probably run for another 50,000 miles 100,000 miles at a push but anywhere between now and that another 100,000 miles there could be some disasters and the disasters so far would probably be with the head so what the hell am i talking about i showed in a previous video that we have these burrs on the camshaft um, on these cam caps here and they are really sharp and a lot of materials missing what we're going to do is we're going to clap this back on without the camshaft in we're going to torque down the bolts and then we're going to use the telescoping gauges to basically go in there and take a you know a measurement and we're going to have a look at how oval these things are. But I'm telling you right now that these are, egg, you know, they're oval shaped with being really tall this way. But let's talk about why that has happened. Um, the reason is, is 91,000 miles. But we need to look at this from a um, situational point of view. So these camshafts, um, you know, they have certain forces applied to them. So basically what happens is, is this rotates and obviously it's going to ride around because of the valves uh, because it's not you know engaging anything in a sense no i'm not going to take all the buckets out because i'll bloody lose them um but as this rotates around you can see that this thing lifts up as it goes around it lifts you can see every time it goes over a lobe it lifts and it lifts and it lifts as it goes around and um basically this is restrained you know the this cam carrier um malarkey goes on here like this and this basically uh whoops there we go i'm looking at the bloody camera not looking at it so that sits on there like so and as this rotates you know basically this is fixed so as this rotates round you can see it's actually lifting the uh the the, the saddle the cam cap the cam caps uh as a an, as an entire unit and it's a bit looking stiff now because it's not meant to ride like this but basically as you can see that that's riding up so what happens is is when this engine is running the forces involved here is that the camshafts are meant to be concentric and stiff and fixed uh um, not fixed in rotation but fixed uh, axially axially and basically the cam you know the, the lobes push down and push the valves open but with every force there is an opposite opposite and equal force so if it requires I don't know, a, a thousand newtons to push open that valve, then there will be a force counter to that, you know, pushing the other way. So when we rotate this, you know, it basically, which is the one that gives, which is the one that moves. However, there is a clearance between these main journals for the camshaft in here, obviously for the oil supply to go through. And because there's a clearance, that means that this cam can lift slightly and that's an acceleration mass times acceleration is a force the bigger the acceleration the bigger the force or the bigger the mass for the equal same acceleration the bigger the force so on but basically what's happened over time is that this is basically just started to ride up every time it wings round, it goes up 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 and the oil pressure rises and because of that they have the oil feeds in this um saddle this uh, cam carrier a uh, cam cap it basically sits on top here so because the force is trying to lift up as it pushes the valves down the oil pressure is basically being fed at the top to try and resist that as soon as the cam starts to go up 
that basically restricts that hole which means the oil pressure goes up locally there it propagates from there and that basically tries to resist you know it's basically it's hydro um, hydrodynamic it's trying to resist that um, because it's incompressible um, you know to a degree so basically because it's trying to do that this cam is trying to lift up it is always trying to lift up um, you know just as when you pull your throttle the bike goes forward and you go further back in the seat or if you're in a car or whatever same kind of process you know same kind of physics um, but what happens is, is over time you know this keeps on going on and 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 it is just slowly abrading away and we can see those marks on these cams and if you actually look there i'll have to take a picture of it um so if we just look at this cam here so this is cylinder number three cam if i take a picture there and then take a picture there and this is 90 degrees rotation you can see that this is pretty much all the way around you can see there's a bit of fretting in there and stuff like that you can see all the way around um, that this thing is fretting away and when it does that this is you know if you're rubbing off this it is rubbing off on something now the weirdest thing is if you take this out and you feel the burrs on this side it isn't as bad that's because as far as the camshaft is concerned the cam is rotating it hits a stop which are these buckets and then as that torque is transferred it is pushing down which means that the springs and all the rest of it they resist that and push up and that basically is burying itself into here so over time these have wallowed out and i'm telling you i'll put money on right now that they are well out of spec i haven't measured them yet but they are well out of spec and the problem with stuff like this is as these uh, as this hole in a sense you know these cam cap carriers um you know this is this oh fucking nora this is a, just like we'll use this as an example these are just bores that are line bored all the way through that's why we have these cutouts here and that's why we have the cutouts there so we can basically line bore the whole thing um to give us access with our tool so we'd have a tool like this that's sp or use the black end you would it spinning away like this and cutting and line boring and then they'll literally hone them like that once that that's happened um where was that once that that's happened that hole and that clearance between the camshafts and this bore you know is a fix is, is, is it, it has a spec um and it, you know there's an oil clearance in there as these start to wear out and as these start to wallow out and get bigger and bigger and bigger the oil pressure will drop now it, regionally it won't drop because the camshaft can now move and accelerate a bit quicker which means there's more forces involved but as this wallows out the runoff in a sense the outlet for the oil is getting larger and larger and larger so basically these would have been pretty good uh if you could you know if you could graph out the wear we've got a bloody well we've got a board there you twat if you could graph out the wear over miles so if we just say that's 50k like that if we could graph this out the wear is just basically an exponential thing it just starts going up like that so you could put this back together and it just depends how bad it was going to get before you get to that so the more that the, basically the more that this wears the worse that it gets you know what i mean so this is now on that down slope of it is just going to wear the shit out of itself more and more and more because then oil clearances are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger we're not compensating for it in any way with by you know increasing flow or oil pressure or anything like that so what you know the, the next question i'm guessing would be well how would you repair this or is it just basically a straight swap out now you can repair this right there's always nine times out of ten you can always repair something however if you were going to repair this there is a slight burr on here so you'd basically have to just say weld all these up which is disastrous because this has lived in oil all its life and trying to get all the oil out of this thing would be a nightmare but let's just say we tig welded these up and we built them up and then you did the same with the cam cap carriers you know we tig these up um then you would stick the whole thing together then you'd have to basically bore it and then you'd have to line bore it and start all again that is ridiculously expensive 
um, because of the setup, because people don't do this, they basically buy new heads. So the next question I imagine that people say, well, can't you just buy a new cam cap carrier like this, seeing as though that this is the thing that wears? Yes, you could, but to maintain your oil pressures, stuff like that, you would basically try and make sure um, that these are bored and honed. People might say, well, why can't you go oversize? You can go oversize if you want to bore these out a bit more, but the problem is, is you're getting really close. Your cam sh your camshafts would have to basically be, you know, they'd have to be new camshafts. We have removed material here, and trying to add that material back is just a massive pain in the ass. You could do some plasma welding on the uh, spray welding on the camshaft. Nah, you just don't want to do that. So ideally, if you wanted to bring this engine properly back to life, and we're only just looking at the head, we haven't looked at the rest of it. Um, you'd talk in a new head, you know what I mean? And um, the processes that are required to try and sort this out are just, you know, it's, it's fantastical. It's amazing how much you'd have to go out of your way to try and do this again. You don't want to really make these any thinner, you know what I mean? So boring these out to take a larger camshaft, meh, you could get away with it, but now you're getting really close to maybe possible cracks if you really are pushing the engine and so on and so forth. So ideally this engine, it was a good idea, you know, if you are worried about these things breaking stuff, after 9,100,000 miles or whatever, it's not a bad idea just to swap the engines out. Something like this, we're going to use this in the future as a test bed engine, so, you know, we're going to put some miles on it and stuff like that. Not in a bike, we're going to use, you know, do some bench testing, um, do some flow characteristic stuff, actually run the engine, and then we're going to do some other things like what happens if you do this and what happens if you do that. We can actually run it in a live engine and see what happens. Um, you know, but with this old engine, stuff like that. But some of these things, you know, if you start seeing massive galling and it's all torn up or it's thrown something, it's a new head, you know what I mean? Um, and then you've got to match everything up and so on. But I just wanted to say, you know, is this engine, you know, can you bring this back to life? Yes, you can, <laughs> but it, it's just not viable, you know what I mean? The amount of work you'd have to do to repair this, to bring this back to life, would just be absolutely insane. There's even some galling on the inside of here. We'll have a closer look when I start taking everything, um, when we start taking all the valves out, we'll actually clean the head up and actually have a real close inspection of the head. And we do all the measurements. Because really, just looking at pretty pictures, excuse me, pretty pictures is one thing. There's actually a, an imprint there. Having a look at pretty pictures is one thing. Actually knowing the numbers is the most important thing. But... Um, you know, one other thing, that's the other thing I was going to get to. Um, this, these pegs in the bottom of here, which is what I started this video on with, there is a um, blade missing, as far as I can tell from the... Uh, that's generally what happens. They have um, one of these blades. Uh, where the fucking hell did it go? One of these blades, one of these plastic blades, something like this, a shorter one. I'll see if I can get a picture of it. Should sit in the bottom there and stop it slapping into the top and uh, she seems to be missing, so that's why she started to jump. But the incredible distance it's had to jump to start slapping there is when the chain whips. And I show you, there's that video of you know chains whipping when you're on the power and off because of the chain's in tension one way and then the other. And that's basically started to grind away at these, make all sorts of particles and just knock on the chain a bit. So it would have sounded a bit rough. Where the fuck that has gone, who knows? But I do know one thing, that is not... Um, 100 miles, 100,000 miles worth of damage, and we were saying about all this elastic shit that's on here, all this RTV. Looks like someone's been in and missed that out. Um, so that gives us a clue that someone has actually been in here. Um, but we're going to constantly look and see if we can find other things um, because there are one or two other marks that I've seen that someone has been in this engine and done whatever. But all that considered, can this engine last 100,000 miles? Well, yes, it has. Can it last longer? Nah, she's already dying. Like I say, the wear on this is basically getting into that exponential range where she just starts to wear and wear and wear and wear. We can see some little uh, spalling there and stuff like that. I'm going to do some real close-up pictures of these um, carriers so we can really see what's going on. Um, the oil filter's still on this, which is fantastic, and we'll see how much debris we can find. Hope that makes sense. I'll see, oh, fucking missed it. And I'll see you in a bit. So, just uh, about to pack away and all the rest of it. And I, 
basically stopped and put the camera back on the tripod and stuff like that. And I just realised there was some other talking points that I kind of had in mind, but I missed. Um, I'm trying to preempt people's questions um, because there's, uh, there's, you know, there's going to be loads of questions by the time I start putting these up this week, or oh, this upcoming week. But anyway, uh, one of the other things is um, I had a quick check on my phone just to have a look, and uh, I'm sure that the question, or one of the preemptive questions, is, well, can't you put sleeves in these? You know, can't you put inserts into these to bulk them back out? You know, bore them out to the larger to accept an insert. Um, like I said, number one is you're getting very close to where you're starting to get a bit weak in the material. Um, but obviously if you re-sleeve them, just say like with a, uh, an aluminium insert, there isn't that much room in the cams to basically accept that uh, width-wise before you start getting into the lobes and stuff. Um, but the other problem is, is you'd have to have inserts that were uh, split. Obviously otherwise you can't get the cams in and out. You also have to have some function to stop and rotate, which you can always do, you know, put a pin in or something like that, or put a tang on it like your main bearings are. One of the things that you, um, you know, so there is that problem of kind of doing that, is that it's in the realms of possibility, but would it work reliably enough? Could you get away with it? You'd have to make sure all these inserts, the holes lined up with all the oil feeds. It just gets messy. Um, but I did check up because I thought, I know there'll be another question. Um, can't you, like I was saying, can't you buy these? The fact of the matter is, if you look, you cannot buy uh, these separately. You cannot buy them separately. You can't actually buy the whole thing as an assembly. It's actually the head and these carriers. So these carriers and the head are all one part. That's all you can buy. Obviously, then pins go in there. But, um, you know, you can only buy this as a, basically the head. So you'd have to buy a new head. And then that means you've got to put all your valve guides in, uh, means you've got to put all your valve seats in, you'd have your valve seats cut, you'd have to have your valve guides reamed, you'd have to basically, to that end, you then buy new buckets, you might as well buy new springs, valve seats, retainers, collets, uh, well, you know, retainers and collets are basically the same thing. Um, you know, and by the time you've done all that, it's like, Jesus Christ, you know, this is getting ridiculously expensive. So the option to go and buy a new, uh, you know, get a new engine or get a, a different head off an old engine that's been crashed or something, isn't really a bad one, um, you know. But yes, there are ways you could get around them. Either try and weld them and build them up, or put inserts in stuff like that. There's ways you could get around it, but like I say, there's so much work involved and stuff like that that it's just not, a, a, it's not viable to do. Because then once you put the whole thing back together. You know, is it is there going to be other issues? You know, if one of them um, insert shell halves rotate, then pff, you know you're done. And you can't have solid ones for the simple fact is you won't be able to get them over your cam lobes. So if you try to fit these over, well, you can't, just can't get them on. There's no way to get them on. Like I say, as you can see in there, there's not really much space. Um, you know, like I say, you could get bearing shell halves. Meh. Then you'd be saying, well, these cams are out of spec, so I'll have to get new cams because these journals here are near, you know. And it's just like, oh, Jesus Christ. And before you know it, you know, it's just it's, <laughs> it's just too much, you know what I mean? The weirdest thing is about some of these things, about parts and stuff, is that you cannot buy these. So these cam, ca these cam caps, these cam cap saddles, you cannot buy them. However... You can buy the insert with the O-ring, fair enough, maybe you'll lose one somehow. But what did strike me as pretty strange is that you can actually buy, what was it? Oh yeah, you could buy, you could buy the ball bearings that go into the end. <laughs> I was like, if you, you, there's no way you're losing one of them. And even if you did, you know, it, yeah, that's, that's really strange. I just thought it really weird. Oh, you can buy the, the ball bearings that fit in there and you can hammer them in and... I was like, that's a bit weird. But yeah, you know, that these sometimes you can buy weird parts off things. Um, but if you look on the parts, I'll put the parts diagram up. But basically these uh, saddles, these um, cam cap saddles, and the head are all basically boxed off and saying that's one part that you can buy. I can't remember, I should have looked how much it was. I had to scroll across and I forgot. But uh, Moving on from that, what we're going to do is, like I say, we're going to take out, um, we're probably just going to take out four valves. Uh, there's no real reason to take them 
Oh, is the yeah, actually no. Well, let's let's take all the valves out. We'll take all the valves out, and we need to look at the bore diameter of the um, oh, what do you call them now? Valve guides. We'll look at all the seats. We need to measure the valve stems, um, stuff like that. You know what I mean? And we'll, we'll measure all the shims and stuff. Uh, I think that's it for the time being. Yeah, I think that's it. I probably will remember something. I'll go, oh, damn it, I forgot. Don't know where this uh, is. Basically, it's like, a, I'll show you the manual. There's a little picture of it. This uh, valve blade, uh, chain blade thing that was missing. Fuck knows where that's gone. Like, literally don't know where that's gone. Someone could have dropped, it's not dropped into the engine because it can only go, I don't think it is. I can't see it down in there. There's no room for it and it'd make a horrible mess if you did. Um, it's probably when someone's taken it off to do valve, uh, you know, do the um, valve clearances, stuff like that, and it's dropped out or something crazy or weird. I, fuck knows. Um, the amount of damage that's on there, I suspect that it was in there. And the fact that this is a good job for the silicon, but it's not, an, it's not a factory job by the look of it. Um, so someone, you know, someone's been in here to do the valve clearances and stuff like that, but yeah, so, um, it's dark, it's the end of the day, I've been shooting all day, so all the episodes, if you've got to this point, I'm pretty sure all the episodes will be this one day, um, and you know, yeah, you can strip an engine in a day, I've just been yapping on and doing stuff and all the rest of it, and answering the phone and getting some dinner and blah, you know. Any road, so that's where we are up until this moment, and the next thing we'll probably go and do is the pistons, and then we need to start on all the, kind of like the accessories and covers and stuff, so uh, take the pistons off because you don't want to leave them exposed. Well, I'll go through that when we go through that. Hope that makes sense, and I'll fucking Nora, and I'll see you in a bit. <laughs>